Okay, here we are. We are live on Facebook, tripping with Holly and Susan live today with our special guest star, Diana Woo! Duncan. All Hi. right. I can't wait to see her back. Be right back. <laughs> okay, so Holly's messing with her phone, trying to find the the live feed so she can share it out. And um, should I do that too? If you want to, go ahead, try that, and see if okay. you can share it out. Uh, we will uh, ask you to bear with us because <laughs> you I know, can only do one thing at once. This <laughs> is our first time being live on Facebook, and um, there are two people out there watching us now. One of the things that I'm going to put into the comments is there. I have a link here as soon as I copy it, um, and all right. And I think I shared us. And why isn't this letting page. me? And I it's think not I letting me. Us. I don't think it's going to let me comment, which is weird. Holly, this is the issue you had the last time that we were playing with this. Okay. That uh, it wouldn't let me and type I comments. Went on, on Safari, which is what you told me to, instead of the Chrome. The Chrome. Mm -hmm. I still can't comment. And I can't either. So it may be an issue with the. Uh, you know the software they've been having some issues with the software so okay uh, like i can't either all okay. right then so then um here though i do have my phone right here as well and i'm gonna pull that up i'm gonna go to um well i think i've got to share it on facebook okay so there we go okay I'm, there i am i'm on okay <laughs> i i've got it up and i see i actually can see on my phone that Tom Godagno, Jessica Godagno, and Gerilyn Stone are watching. So, hey guys, welcome! Thanks for thanks for being here. Hi. You know, um, okay. So, you know, uh, our tripping people know us. And Diana, I actually got a kick out of somebody on your page wrote that they liked the tripping videos that Holly and I do. So, I was really kind of stoked holly to see that that was kind of cool that somebody was like admitting that they <laughs> that they watch our videos yes so that was kind of cool but um so they know that we um you know okay, they know, know us but... yells at me a lot for not staying on point I know. Yeah. I know well, you're shocked. But... This is a chitty chatty thing. So, you know, we're kind of more flexible and open here, Holly. But if I pose a question, I do expect you to answer the, the actual question as posed to you. And but you can expect all you want, but... <laughs> Yeah. So, um, but Diana, why don't you just give us a little overview of who you are and what you write and that kind of thing. Okay. Well, um, <laughs> Gee, thanks, Susan. Uh, I don't, didn't know this was coming. I write romantic suspense. I write paranormal romance. And I write romantic comedy, depending on what mood I'm in. What day it is. And what day it is and what ideas present themselves. And uh, I've been writing since 1998. Um, well, it took me five years to get published. And I published... Was it five books with Harlequin? Six books with Harlequin. And then I went indie. So I've got, I think it's 12 books available now. Good. Last time I counted. And uh, in all three genres. There you go. That's awesome. Yeah, it's kind of like Holly. Holly has a foot in a number of different genres as well. You know, she's got her romantic comedy. She's got her more serious romance. And she's got her cozy mysteries. And sometimes they kill people. Because, you know, I just feel... It's, it's very thing. satisfying, isn't it? <laughs> yes, I love killing people. There are days. We can get away with that in, in, in books. We can manage that. Yes, yes. And if anybody ever needs help, getting rid of the body. <laughs> yeah, but our search history is, you know, but we're writers. It's okay. <laughs> our search, really? really? No, FBI, don't look at our, our search <laughs> history. Go away, yeah. go away. Yeah. So actually, though, Di, I was thinking, I, I had a question for you that kind of relates to that, and that is, tell us the strangest story you have about doing research for your for your romantic suspense books. The strangest story I have. Um, 
I hope it's the story I'm thinking of because otherwise I'm going to have to feed you the story. <laughs> right. Uh, I don't remember story. which story it is. I have a lot of strange ones, but are you thinking of the one where I asked my husband to duct tape me and put me in the trunk of the car? Yes, that's the one. Escape, and the neighbors were all walking by like, what in the hell? <laughs> Like, don't worry, just book research, no problem. He's really, yeah. he's not trying to actually get rid of me. No, don't worry, I'm <laughs> saying. No garbage bags, no chainsaws. You know? My husband's not a cop, close. so I get weird questions from friends, and he just gave up. I'm like, hey, honey, like if I were in the Everglades, and you put me in my handcuffs, but I was a cop, could I have a hidden key that the bad guys didn't get? <laughs> he doesn't even bat an eye. He's like, yeah. And I said, okay, like, you know, if you use this caliber weapon and blow somebody's brains out, how far would they blow out the back of their skull? <laughs> and he just says, yeah, it's a big one, Holly. And it go away. So I'm like, oh, perfect. And so Yeah, I did. also did. Uh, I was standing in line at a coffee shop and there was a cop ahead of me and his car was out in front of the coffee shop. And I had my daughter with me. She was about 15 at the time. And I struck up a conversation with him, told him I was a writer Ask him if he would take me out and put me in the back of the cop car and handcuff me to the <laughs> to the console back there so I could see if there was any way that I could wiggle my way out or what it was like. And my daughter was just like, oh, my God, Mom. Oh, Mom. She wouldn't go to the coffee shop with me for ages after that. So... But yeah. you know, I don't know why our kids don't find us as sweet and amusing as we find they ourselves. They really don't. But you know, re accurate research is important. <laughs> it is, and even better if you can embarrass your children at the same yeah, time, right? Know, right? Yeah. That is awesome. That is awesome. Um, yeah. You have any other crazy stories that maybe I haven't even heard yet? Mm -hmm. That was the best one. That was the best one. That was the one I was thinking of. The duct tape in the car, or yeah. the, <laughs> the yeah. duct, the getting duct taped and thrown in the trunk of the car. That I just, I love that story. I did ask my husband if I could handcuff him to the bedpost, and he declined. <laughs> oh, that was the one research thing he was not willing to help me with. I was like, okay, he, he court. doesn't trust you. Apparently, <laughs> apparently, you trust him more than he trusts you. Then apparently, so. Apparently I don't so. know though. She kills people. He probably That's has, true. He That's has a true. valid reason not to trust her. Yeah, but if she wanted to do away with him, she would have done it already. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. You know, I might keep him around just to kind of jack up his pension a little bit longer. Yeah, before, there you, you know. go. Before you He'll do anything to get rid now. of him. We have to talk about this before he gets home because, you know, I don't want him to go. <laughs> you don't want him. Things, right? Well, make sure he doesn't watch the replay on Facebook then. Too. Right. Don't give it away. Don't give That's it away. That's right. That's right. Um, I, I did. We did have a reader uh, give an advanced question for you, Di. And um, this was from Anita. And Anita wanted to know if you had any plans to do another book like The Sword of the Raven because she just loved that one. I love that one too. Um, yeah, I wrote that book right before I got drastically sick and I had always planned to make it a quartet. There were going to be four books in that series. And then after it took me like four years to recover, I had sort of dropped the ball on that. So I just left it and moved on. But I someday, I, I won't say never. Someday right. I'd love to go back and Complete that series on oh, Holly's the Ella. Dog. Ella. Don't it work with true. dogs and children. They'll upstage you every time. They will. Um, I do have a trilogy coming out maybe next year, hopefully next year, that is a Highlander time travel trilogy. And in the first book, the heroine goes back in time. But in the second two books, the Highlander heroes come to our time. So that will be very similar. There's a lot of magic in it. There's a lot of, um, you know, things that are very similar to Sword of the Raven. So hopefully people will enjoy that one as much. I'm sure they will. I, I remember the start of that because actually that started as a challenge yes. between you and me and our other critique partner, Jen. And each of one of us was going to have one of those books. And it was and, going to be novellas. Yes, they're right. They were going to be novellas and not novels. And um, I, 
I think I started it. Jen started hers, but we sort of flitted off, you know, like some yeah. a squirrel ran by <laughs> and we but you grabbed it then and went on. But but and, that's yeah. that's kind of where you got your start though, it really, did. right? The, the novella turned yeah. into like a four hundred thousand word trilogy, <laughs> which happens to me a lot. <laughs> Yeah, but I mean the whole idea of Highlanders and a certain amount of paranormal, you have roots with that. Yes, yes, I do. I have Scottish roots. I went to Scotland to research the Sword of the Raven. And, um, that's, yeah, so it, it really speaks to me. My Both my grandmothers were Scottish. One was Scottish, one was Scots-Irish. And so I have a real affinity and a connection to that. But also, and see, I, I get I get to do this because I know you fairly well. You know, we, we go back a long ways there, Diana Duncan. Um, but tell us your your actual your your name, Diana Duncan, has roots. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. I was in love with Duncan McLeod from the Highlander TV show. Yep. And I, I, start, I got my start writing Highlander fan fiction. And uh, I was in a Highlander chat group back in the day before Facebook even existed. And I became friends with one of the gals in there very close. And we would I would trade. I would send her my stories. And she would read them and, you know, and so she sent me a picture of her in her den in front of this wall of books. And she said, I have read all these books and your, your stories are better than these books. So you should really write romance. And I'm going, oh, I've been a romance reader since I was 14 years old and discovered a stashed bag of forbidden harlequins in my mom's closet and read them all. And uh, so I thought, well. Ah, give it a shot. So she bullied me all the way through the first book, which in the about fourth incarnation became Sword of the Raven. Uh, it took me probably 10 or 12 years to get that book to work to what it actually became. So yeah, it is. That's cool. But you were writing other books. It's not like you took an entire 10 years to write that one. Right. Book. I wrote it, set it aside. I shopped it around a little bit. Just when I finished it, the bottom fell out of the paranormal. paranormal. Bucket, of yeah. course, naturally. And so that's when I started writing more contemporary romantic suspense because that was the that one was that I love to read. So yeah. I, I love to read this. I'll try to write it. Interestingly enough, I I also got my start in fan fiction, not Highlander fan fiction. I feel like I'm like out of the loop. Here. See, you <laughs> didn't write fan fiction. I know. Um, I I started with the fan fiction, but also the very first romance that I wrote. That is, you know, in uh, probably not even on the hard drive anymore. God only knows whatever happened to that one. But the hero, <laughs> the hero in that one was based on. Duncan McLeod, like he. Oh, uh, I didn't know that. I never, yeah, I never yeah. even watched that series, so I oh, really, I feel oh, like I'm on man out here. Oh, oh you oh, missed oh, something good. Well, you out. If they ever put it on Netflix or whatever, you have something to go and binge and watch because you can watch it on Amazon Prime, I believe. Oh, there you oh, go. There you, you go. On Amazon yeah. Prime. Pretty yeah. Sure. I really, I really yeah. always enjoyed that one. Um, you know, there was a lot going on. We've got uh, some other people have come in. Dana is here. Hi, Dana and Lisa and uh, Joanne. And Joanne says, hi, ladies. Uh, we're having an issue with the comments. I, I'm having to find the comments on my cell phone because yeah, the, I the can't, software is the the not working. Terrible. So when we're done, I'm going to have to contact their support people and just say, hey, the comment thing was not working. But hey, hey, so far, so good. Knock on wood. We're not doing too badly. Yeah, <laughs> we're we're staying. We got our network is staying strong, all that good stuff. So uh, a lot of a lot of great stuff. Well, I wanted to see if we can. Um, I want to see if we can show uh, Diana's video that I made for her for her um, for her survival. Well, you're a techno tonight. goddess. Well, yeah. we'll see. let's Go see. For it. Don't, don't 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 let's let's not count our count our chickens before they're hatched here. Let's see what we can do. 
All right, let's see. All right, well, it's, oh, here we go. Let me get us back here. There we go. With it, because I couldn't hear anything. There, I, there was lots of music on my end, but that's a question. People watching, did you were you able to hear the music or not? And see, that was something somebody else had said that recently that they had an issue with that, with getting the um, getting the music to to play on videos and whatnot. I don't know. Right. Again, no, at, at least on my I end, can hear it. Here. You, yeah, you could hear it. it. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Uh, yeah. So Diana, right now, survive the night and let's pop that. Let's get that up here. We'll just at least get there. Oh, beautiful. It's like, I know what I'm oh, doing. It's underneath you. Yeah. Yeah. I, I know what I'm doing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so survive the night is the first in a series. Yes. So tell us a little bit about Survive the Night and the series. Okay, Survive the Night is uh, a, about a couple who uh, they they fell in love, and then uh, Bailey, that's the heroine, um, saw a news broadcast of a, a situation where her boyfriend Con was, uh, you know, doing his SWAT cop thing, and it absolutely terrified her. So she decided that she had to break up with him for both of their sakes. And, and then he comes to the mall where she works in a bookstore and he tries to convince her to, you know, give him, give him another chance. And at that point, the mall gets taken over by a crew of vicious bank robbers and they're locked in there for the next 12, 14 hours with these killers and they have friends, mutual friends who are in the mall, who work in the mall, who are taken hostage and the um, bank robbers are going to kill them when they're ready to leave. And so they've got a ticking clock and they have to work together. She's a pacifist, so she's not very comfortable with using force or violence, but she's got to realize that sometimes you got to do what you got to do. Mm -hmm. um, the There's four brothers in the family. They're Irish. There's Con. Well, Aiden is the oldest. Con is the second one. And then Liam and then Grady. And uh, uh, Aiden is the rear guard, the SWAT rear guard. And in, in his book, he and the heroine are stranded on a deserted island. Well, it's kind of deserted. And that yeah. survive. So, uh, survive the, the hunt, hunt right. yeah. and they have to survive and, and find a way they, the, the, I don't want to give away any spoilers, but they're yeah, being, no hunted. Spoilers. yeah, they're being hunted down and they have to find a way to work together again and survive this, get off the Island or, you know, get away from these killers. Uh, in Liam's book, it is uh, survive the fire. He's a bomb, uh, bomb squad tech and his he has a canine partner named murphy and uh his heroine he and his heroine are in las vegas and there is a she's being stalked by a crazy person and this crazy person has planted bombs all around the city of las vegas and they have to disarm them before and i gotta say i love all of them but the but but the opening to that book just I love the opening to that one. It is just so it just grabs you like this and just yanks you in. I love that one. I love the opening. Thank you. To that one. Thank you. And then the fourth book is Survive the Storm. That's Grady's story. He's a EMT helicopter pilot, um, and uh, he and his heroine have to uh, save pretty much the whole. The 
planet. The world. Save the world. And killer virus. And uh, yeah, so and each book is set in a 24 hour time frame with each chapter being about an hour in the stories. Right. And you know what I remember too, Di? You came up with that concept just before the TV show yes. 24 came out. Yes. And I remember when the TV show came out and you were like, damn it. I just, <laughs> man. Yeah, there is yeah, no such thing as an original idea, though, is there? Because there's always some other story. And that, there is that synchronicity where, the, you know, you come up with the idea and somebody else comes up with the idea at the same I did time. When I Confession of a Party Crasher, there, it was, there was a movie, Party Crashers, that came out. That's like, right. And you did the same two, thing. Yeah, yours and I came. I the book two years ago, but yep. their movie came out at the same time as my book. So, yeah, same kind of thing. That's and, right. And, of course, you know, it makes us look like we're being derivative. It's really, it's right. Hollywood stealing from from us that's <laughs> right that's right we have rose came in hi rose and um lisa said that she agreed that the beginning to liam's story is she said the liam's the beginning to liam's is the best thank you lisa so you know uh yeah, see, Hollywood, it does. And that's that's the whole thing. You know, sometimes people think that, oh, well, you know, this idea is similar to that idea. Well, it's not about the idea, right? It's about the execution. Yeah, years exactly. ago, Harlequin did a five authors given the first opening line and told us all to run with it and write a short story. And they asked me to do mine in a comedic vein. Somebody else did a historical vein. We were all known in those genres. But it was amazing how divergent some place that started exactly the same place, how differently we all saw the story. Right, right. Well, that was the thing when when we were going to do the three time travel things. It was like, you know, <laughs> dies would be different from mine and Jen's would be different from both of ours and, and everything else. But but that's exactly it. And that's that was actually one of the things that I kind of wanted to talk about tonight, because I know that both, you know, obviously Diana has written cops and and Holly, you I know you have written. You've talked about the fact that you have a, a I've cop a, husband. Right. And I've written a number of cops. My cops are rarely uh, saving the world. They're, they're more likely to be finding a kid doing a mural on a school and busting them or just smaller the one in the PTA trilogy that um, once upon a Thanksgiving, we're sort of talking about this week. The one hero is a cop and he basically is going to schools and doing presentations on public safety. So my cops tend to do more of the that kind of copy community, stuff. community policing kind of yes. stuff. Although I do have a brother who is a bomb squad guy, and I do have another brother who does internet horrible crimes on that. So um so i do have experience with that but i choose to write the softer side of police work mm -hmm. i that i did that in my romantic comedy um while i haven't done it yet because the uh it's the it's again another big irish family with 10 kids and the yeah that's the way to do it yeah that's not a job is, uh, is a cop but in this that story he won't be saving the world. He'll be doing something more along the lines of the community because it's the context. It's, you know, if you're writing a cop who's in a romantic suspense, you want him to be more right. hardcore. More alpha. Yeah. Well, not, not necessarily. I mean, cops are kind of alpha anyway, but in a romantic comedy, you see the more, uh, familial or community side of them than you do when they're in a life or death situation because they're of course they're going to be a lot more intense when lives are at stake versus one, right. one would hope my no, no, no barney series. fife no <laughs> barney fife is a cop and he is just very laid back mm -hmm. he keeps trying mm -hmm. to convince the heroine he is not going to arrest her for a murder she didn't commit but oh she's well, not good. sure she doesn't think she believes him. So I, I find him more exasper exasper exasperated than anything else in this story. Well, so, was but I it, love that that shows how we can all twist things, though. Yes, yes. Was it in your PTA series, Holly, that the one heroine was in trouble for burning down a shed? My <laughs> accidental arsonist, yes. Yeah. And so I actually had to... I, 
talk to a local judge help me out on that one i'm like you know how would this work because you want it to be close enough that if an attorney or a cop or a judge mm -hmm. picks it up and reads it they're not annoyed and then i just do my own thing anyways but right um right. but yeah she had spent months redoing her husband's office and the only thing missing was the couch and she finally found the perfect couch put it in went to celebrate the office was redecorated with him and found him boffing a secretary how oh. cliche on the couch on the couch so when she divorced him she wanted the couch in the divorce settlement just because it messed up his office but would you ever sit on that couch oh no, no. <laughs> so, carly and once upon a Val valentine's day she lit it on fire and accidentally was an accidental arsonist she didn't mean for her yeah. So now we know who burned down Cheryl's she shed. That, oh, there it is. Oh, they That's should right. have me on that commercial. They should have. That would have done. So, so okay, Once Upon a Valentine. That Once is in the PTA. Okay, yeah. the PTA moms. I, I thought so. I mean, I know you've written so many books, and I know a lot about a lot of them. But after a while, even for my own, they kind of all blur. Oh, yeah. You kind no. of like, which book was that again? I keep yeah. a huge file, and it's one cohesive file because somebody will write and say oh i loved your hero nick and i'll say i have no idea who that is i don't know what <laughs> book it was nick i did i write a nick so then i can just go into search in this master document and, and pull it up and That's it, it right, works yeah it, it makes my life so much easier because the, it has gotten to the point where i've done enough that sometimes they blur all the time it's like what color were his eyes uh what was his middle name yeah, yeah. you have to go back and look the bible that's why it's holly keeps the full holly jacobs bible uh <laughs> shanae came in hi shanae how you doing hey if anybody out there has questions do you know do give us let us you know yeah, write only it. susan can see him at this point I, i'm, yes, I'm looking at them i'm looking at them on my phone phone if uh, people were I, but I haven't seen any com well I've seen a few comments I've seen you know oh Joanne yeah here here was a comment from Joanne that I had missed Joanne did hear the music on the video so oh, good. Thank it you, did work so now we know that that worked but if anybody out there has questions for anybody here do you know do put pop them in the comments because uh, otherwise we'll just keep chatting because that's never an issue for <laughs> any of us to just to just chit chat. Uh, yeah, I think yeah. anybody who's watched our videos is pretty much aware of. By the way, somebody watched our your favorite color, blue or black ink pen. Uh -huh. And actually went so far as to post me a picture of what type of pen she liked. Oh, I'm like, now that there is you precise. Go. There that you was, go. She was okay. Right on it. We do have a question. Woohoo! We have a question. Um, Lisa wants to know when is Dai's next book due? Not like she hasn't been busy or anything. <laughs> well, that's a really good question, Lisa. Um, I will put the pressure probably, on her. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I will probably not work through the holiday season. So I'm guessing about first week in January, second week in January, I think I will pull out that Highlander time travel. It's two and two thirds done. So all I have to do is finish the last third of the last book. And I'm hoping that won't take too long. And so I'm hoping that by maybe March, I can get that out. And then I have a Christmas book I'm writing for my Survive series. And it was supposed to be out this Christmas, and then things happened. So that might be a Christmas in July. Hawaii happened. Hawaii happened. Oh, Maybe that's a shame. Happened. Hawaii happening. Yeah. I, you know, but but frankly, now is the time, I think, to be writing on it. Because you have all the mood enhancers that you need, all the Christmas inspiration that you need yeah. all around you. Where if you try and write a Christmas book in the spring or in July, you know, you're like, okay, I got to get it at Christmas. Uh, frankly, you can start Christmas right after Halloween. And have I was going to say, because, frankly, oh, I, dude. I'm, I'm not in a Christmas mood now. I was at the store over the weekend and I was looking at some Christmas stuff and I just was like, no, no. I just like walked away. Like I'm not in the mood to even think about it yet. I have very strict rules. 
Yeah, Thanksgiving. See, in my house growing up, thanks the when Santa Claus appeared at the end of the Macy's parade, mm -hmm. then it was Christmas season. Then you were allowed to sing Christmas carols. Then you know, but not before that. <laughs> I am totally right. with you. The day after Thanksgiving, I don't care. I'll get my music out. I'll start that. Yeah. But, and then well, by New Year's Day, I want it all gone. Yeah. I'm done. Yeah, put it away. See, I'm that way too. Like if uh, it's the idea, it's the putting away part that is so annoying. So like I want to put it away immediately. It's like pack it all up, put it away. Well, we bought a few years back a monorail system that comes out and goes Ooh. in the front room. And it is such a hassle to put up and I was already asked by the minions yesterday cuz they remember it now. If, if we, when are we getting the monorail out? I'm like, oh, not till after Thanksgiving. And uh, there was very little enthusiasm for it. <laughs> I, I don't think I can escape getting it out, but it's like hours of putting it all Assembly. together. And, uh -huh. yeah, oh, yeah, because we've got the contemporary and we've got the Polynesian. So it's a whole Disney monorail system. It's a thing. My trees have been shrinking over the years. I started with a seven foot tree and then I went down to a five foot tree. Now I've got like a two and a half foot tabletop tree. So, and with Fraser, my kitty around, that's, you know, putting up a big tree is probably an exercise in futility anyway, because yeah, climbing it, knocking it over and taking all the ornaments. And he does that with my little tree anyway, but at least it's not such a disaster. It's right. It's it, it, yeah, if it tips over, it's not such a big deal. Uh, Lisa wanted you to know that her birthday is March 25th. So she thinks <laughs> you releasing a book would be a really good uh, birthday present for her. So okay, there you have it. I will try. I will get on that. I will try to make that date. That's a good uh, deadline to have. And Dana, Dana is worse than, than the rest of us. She puts her Christmas day, uh, decorations away two days after Christmas. She doesn't even wait to New Year's. <laughs> <laughs> she's like but she says she doesn't have kids so she'd just rather get her house you know, back Dana, in order I'm sort of with you mine has always gone by new year's eve because i really want to bring in the new year with the house back in order and that's that's back to I the celebrate. routine right yes, back to the I, routine i enjoy that and i will confess that like when kids go back to school there's a certain amount of post-holiday glee that happens <laughs> like, peace well, out everybody yes that happens yeah. That happens when you have children and you work at home and, and the uh, kids go. But, you know, the those of us who, you know, now have day jobs outside the house, it's like, oh, man, got to go back yeah. to work. <laughs> Lisa, you, know, you put the note on the door, unless somebody's bleeding, unless something is on fire, or unless the police are out front, do not disturb me while I'm writing. There you go. Lisa said she's Jewish, and it's a nice perk to just have a menorah and candles, and that's <laughs> it. There's not, not this extreme you decorating. Judaism could probably recruit a lot of people with that as their slogan. That's Come over to us. <laughs> I can get rid of the fuss. We, oh, that's even the slogan. It's it rhymes and I everything. No, I think I think it's a thing, guys. Come over to us. Get rid Forget of the fuss. The fuss. <laughs> there you go. Okay, so there you go. Uh, so Lisa, there you have it. You have to start recruiting people to Judaism that way. So forget this crazy Christianity with all the crazy decorations. Um, and, and Dana is agreeing with you, Holly. She loves the concept of having it all squared back away and ready for the new year. You know, despite the fact that the software is not working with the comments, this is working out just fine with me with the cell phone here. So we're at least managing to communicate yeah, no, with our people out there. I yeah, love it. Last time I could see the comments on the side. I can't even see the comments. Yeah. Please. Some, something's not right with the software, but again, yeah. And oh no, well, but I think it's I think it's cool. We're making it work. Well, what I love, I do what I do love is the nice the the screen that we're able to have here and how we're mm -hmm. able to to do all these cool things like this, you know. Using the guru. Ah, uh, Susan just likes tech toys, you know. I just like toys to play with. So yeah. I'm not get my email like, to she likes, like, like office supplies and yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, I exactly. Like yep. Well, there, I had to pop up my, there my, my, my go come home to the holidays with the Hawkins folks, because yeah, like, uh, like Diana said, she had that one, the plan for the IRA, the 10, 
the 10 Irish family. That was the only way, because like you guys wrote series and I, in the beginning, could not figure out for the life of me, figure out how the heck did you do a series in romance? Because, you know, we have to have a new hero and heroine every, every book mm -hmm. because that's the nature of romances. But then, you know, but then along came the Hawkins and I was like, now I figured it out. They just make this big, giant family, you well, know. And even like my Perry Square series, it was just sometimes I write them knowing I'll have books that are connected to it. And sometimes it just happens. I wrote mm -hmm. a book. I loved it. But I love the little community I created. Mm -hmm. So it made sense to set the next one there. And it, it was an inadvertent series. Those secondary characters pop up and demand to have a story of their own. And well, that's, that's what's happening one. with my Survive series. So, yeah, it's like now the secondary characters are saying, hey, okay, you finished with the brothers. Now what about us? Yeah. yeah. And that's so much fun. Cool. Very cool. Well, uh, ladies, we have um, been 36 minutes, believe it or not. So Ooh, uh, when you're having fun. It does. It does. Okay. So we'll, we'll put a last call for questions or comments from anybody out there in live land who are watching. Uh, um, so if you got a question, speak now or ask later. <laughs> ask later <laughs> after this is over. But uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, uh, We'll hold for questions. Hold, please. <laughs> One of us should sing, not me. <laughs> Holly, we'll let Holly do oh, it. I was, I was actually up in the studio the other day, and I did not realize someone had come in, and I had been playing my music and realized I'd been singing when I spotted them. It's a huge studio, and there's different sections. They were up in the front section. I was in the back. And I'm like, ah. Uh, so was I singing out loud? And she said, maybe just a little. I'm like, oh. <laughs> well, you're just, you're having a good time. And that's, you know, I, I am, I tend to sing along as well. You know, people who drive past me in my car will may see me doing yep. this and singing. Yeah. And, you I know. was on my way Here, you know, That's a benefit of that. I was on the QEW one day coming back from Harlequin, as a matter of fact. And it was backed up, like not moving at all. And I was getting more and more annoyed you, when you just feel that like tension. The tension. Rising. I'm like, this is ridiculous. So I put my, it was not my iPhone at that time. It was just my iPod on shuffle. And like every song that came on was a song I liked. And so I was singing along and just having kind of a blast with it. And the guy next to me, since we were creeping, started to laugh and he leaned over and as he started bebopping in his car i'm like oh this is so much fun like we could start a whole thing so well it does make the time go better and like you said there's no point in sitting there and getting just aggravated yeah these days i do a lot of podcasts when i travel yeah i and, do too yeah and those are a lot of fun um my daughter turned us on to stuff you should know and it's just such a weird thing. And last trip to Philadelphia, I was with my husband and we listened to one on foot binding and it like scarred me for life. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know if that's stuff I needed to know. And then they did one on sea monkeys and <laughs> absolutely ruined sea monkeys for me forever. So yeah, like, they're is, not really monkeys. <laughs> well, I knew that they were krill, but the the inventor of it just was not such a nice human being. And so, so it's kind of like, oh, that's that's just sad. So, if you buy them today, they're not the same, and they okay. tend to come to life because he had a way of preserving them that he did not pass on. So. Just so like freaky science stuff. No, just uh, weird stuff. The the foot binding was kind of odd, but th they do like some historical stuff. They did some on like a Russian party that stuff happened to like mystery stuff. So they pretty much anything that appeals to them, they will do a podcast. Kind of like us. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we'll so, really talk, just about you know what, I really, talk about it. We'll have to forward this to them and say, hey, invite us on because we would do really well with you guys. There you go. Stuff you should know. Di, so, do you have any podcasts that you like to listen to? Uh, not really. No, I'm more into watching things than I am listening. It's, I seem to like when I'm listening to things, I sort of like drift off and my own. Yeah. And then I come back a couple seconds later and like, what did they say? And then I have what to did I miss? 
Yeah. 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 I mostly just watch a lot of cooking shows on the Food Network and HGTV. And that's kind of my guilty pleasure relaxation thing. And I, then I have all kinds of projects that my husband can do because it's like, oh, I'm on HGTV today. And he's like, no, no. <laughs> don't, do that. don't turn that channel on. <laughs> no. He has to block it all the time. He's like, I'm going to block that channel. He's yeah. going to. He's turning off the cable on you, so you can't watch that anymore. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen some of your your painting projects and your other stuff. Mm -hmm. So Lisa said she's not a good listener, totally visual. I'm the same way. Like, mm -hmm. believe it or not, I have never done an audiobook. I have listened to short clips from audiobooks and maybe, maybe in the car. You know, like, because I will do podcasts if I'm doing a long drive, but I, I'm the same way. Like, I am a visual person. I am totally, like, I, when I used to teach, I used to tell kids, you know, turn on the TV set in your, in your mind and like vision mm -hmm. and see it. And it's like, what, That's what it. if you yeah. don't have a TV set? And I'm like, <gasps> <gasps> you, don't, you don't have a TV set in your head? Oh, you poor well, child. Well, if you're going to try an audiobook, the Harry Potter ones are amazing. The narrator is Jim Dale, and I would listen to the man read a phone book. Like J.D. Robb too. audiobooks are wonderful, too. Susan Erickson narrates those, and she has Rourke's accent down like you uh, – Oh, I haven't done no, it. No, me no. either. Now that would tempt me to try it. Hey, yeah. Lisa, Lisa's going to make us all. Lisa said she lives near Gaines Magnolia Silos. We're coming to visit you, Lisa, because we want to go to Magnolia. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that would That's be cool. she has like an extra room. For yeah. Is there a place. guest room? Do you have room for some writers to, <laughs> to hang out and, and go see that? That would be cool. I, I, I think I would. I do enjoy that. That is what I do miss some of those. Uh, but it's certain ones that and it's that mm -hmm. I enjoy the personality as well. Yeah. The personality of the people. That you know, it, it's kind of like books and characters right mm -hmm. it's the characters that attract us so it is. lisa says we can come on now lisa's okay. inviting us oh, lisa, i don't know right. if you're ready for that yeah <laughs> <laughs> the writer invasion i don't know if waco <laughs> is ready for that <laughs> never mind lisa i don't know if, if waco can do it she said the kids are gone and so she has room so right. there you go I'm hey tripping down. Tripping. There you go, Holly. There you go. That, that would be quite a trip. We could we could record a lot of videos between here and Waco, Texas. My goodness. That would be quite the thing. That would be such a long drive. It would be. I, I, I think like that's that's a plane. Hours, that's a plane trip. I'm sorry. As far as I could drive. Yeah. Uh, that's a that's a flight instead. Yeah. All right. Well, you know, ladies, it has been really great fun. I have really enjoyed this. It I has hope been a blast. I hope the folks out there have enjoyed it. And um, so we'll have to see if we should do some more trip and live. Diana, thank you for being our guinea oh, pig. Thank you so much, Diana. It was, thank it was you. awesome to get to hang with you. Yeah, I love hanging out with you guys too. We should do it just for fun. Hey, there well, that, there is that. It is. You're like, don't broadcast it anywhere. We just hang <laughs> out in the, you know, behind the scenes. And, <laughs> but not then accidentally broadcast it out and get into trouble. Well, the whole the whole thing is uh, th this is kind of how Holly and I ended up doing tripping, right? Because like we do when we draw, I mean, we talk, 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 talk the whole way, the whole way. So we were like, you know, and also I had been I had been bugging Holly to do something just like this, yeah. a Facebook Live where we could interview people and stuff. And, and I couldn't pin her down. She's so busy all the time. So I got her. I'm like, okay, we are going to this well, workshop. Well, and then you added some complexity to it. Cause like 5am I'm always up and going, but now Susan's got to go to a job. So it's just like, yeah. I know. how dare you need to keep a roof Susan. over your head, Susan, and need a Susan. date job. It's That's all your so fault. Yeah. <laughs> that, it just gets worse every day. I kind of meet myself coming and going. I think I, you must, but, yeah, but, but so once I realized that I was going to have her captive in the car again, <laughs> I was like, that's it. We're filming in the car. That, that, not that the will same work. way Diana did it with duct tape though. In the trunk. Yeah. No, 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 we did not do that. We did not. 
There was none of that. Although, although I have to say when we all, when we get together and that, and that's the funny thing too, when writers get together, it, it can get crazy. And it's funny because we're not, we're generally introverts. Mm -hmm. We're generally not really crazy people, but when we get together with our own people, Susan, speaking for herself, Diana and I are just sane and sweet as can be. Right. right. <laughs> yeah. Nobody ever overheard me at a restaurant, like, plotting to kill anyone or anything. I mean, that never happens. No, not at all. Not at all. All right, all right. ladies. Hey, thank you so much. And Have hey, folks night. out there, Lisa, Diane, uh, Bobby just came in. And sorry, Bobby, we're getting ready to go. Uh, but we appreciate all you folks who came in live uh, we really do appreciate you hanging with us. And uh, hey, we're going to have a rebroadcast re of this. It will be on Facebook. And we hope you'll share it with other people. Because hey, next time, we want even more people in here. So hey, thanks for tripping Thank live you, with us. We'll see you next time. Where's the camera? There it is. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> I never